Hello, welcome to Lemon Studios, where we talk anything and everything in entertainment. I'm, of course, Lemon himself, Ezekiel Lemon, and this is my review for Friday Night Smackdown on August 9th, 2024. But before we get into that, let's get the house clean out of the way, shall we? I'm going to leave a like. Comment below, let me know your thoughts on this week's episode of Smackdown, and of course, hit that subscribe button as it helps me grow into my YouTube career. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, all that out of the way, let's get into the review. So, a lot of people were really looking forward to this episode of Smackdown, me included. Not just because Roman Reigns was coming back. Well, let's be honest, a big indicator was that Roman Reigns was coming back. And with Roman coming back, there was going to be a much clearer direction. And also, no more real filler episodes, if you will, with some of the characters, such as a Cody Rhodes and a Solo Sokoa. Now, there are absolute clear directions of it. And also, it does look like now, we'll get back into, hey... We now have all full-time champions. Let's make their presence known very well. Let's get these contender matches happening. Um, and let's just make it very clear what we're doing. Like with LA Knight with the US title, it was obviously going to be Santos Escobar as the uh, first opponent. Really like the match that him and Andrade had. Um, now that Santos is gonna have to do some promo work with it, uh, there is a big mismatch when it comes to LA Knight and, um, and Santos. Uh, so that'll be really interesting, but the matches will be fine as well. I expect LA Knight to hold this title for a little bit to, uh, to give it even more relevance. I know a lot of people say Logan Paul didn't do anything with the U.S. title. Bull crap. Uh, he did a lot to m give that title a presence, a prestige that people wanted to go see it. We, even though he only defended it twice, he you wanted to see him defend that belt and, you know, hopefully lose any time that he was on screen. And now LA Knight is just going to carry that going forward now with actual defenses and consistent appearances. I don't know when we do this match. I assume we're going to have it on a SmackDown because I really don't think we will have the U.S. title defended in Germany. I don't know. That just kind of seems weird to me. I, I do expect the Intercontinental title to be uh, defended in Germany because it's the Intercontinental title. So that makes more sense. But Santos and LA Knight looks very uh, promising and we're continuing on the build with uh, Carmelo Hayes and Andrade as well. Um, at least that's the justification for our third match besides like, hey, let me just have another shot. Um, I'm hoping we get like a best of seven and that could be like a best of seven to see who challenges LA Knight for the US title. So I am hoping that we are doing that. Again, just good building around the mid card to make it seem much more stronger. I also find it really funny of the difference between the mid card, the tags, and the women's division as opposed to the main event scene on both shows, really. Because, look, we had qualifiers for the tag team uh, titles as well. We didn't do just a uh, set of Fatal 4-Way. We did two two one-on-one uh, -on -one matches or two tag team matches, I should say. And then those two winners are going to face each other the following week, uh, which is the Street Profits and DIY. I'm glad it was two faces that one. Usually in this case, since we do one face win and then one heel win. And then, like, it's obvious, okay, where well, the champions are healed, so obviously the face is going to win. Not this case. Both faces are going through. So there is a little bit of jeopardy there, even though I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Street Profits that face the bloodline um, for the tag team titles. Hopefully at Bash at the Berlin, because I want the tag titles to be defended on a PLE. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, those qualifying matches for the U.S. title, the tag team titles. We'll see about the women's title, because, really, the women's title got a, got a bye week. Uh, this uh, this week, really both. Obviously, Liv and Rhea are going to continue on, so they did push that forward on Monday Night Raw. But on SmackDown, they were just like, all right, Nia won, and we're done. <laughs> and then we're going to wait a couple weeks before we get that storyline going. It does look like Tiffany has something. But anyway, back to my point. The main, the main event titles, the WWE title and the World Heavyweight title, has been always presented with their matches of, hey, uh, do you want to fight me? Okay, cool, we'll do it. Because, like, think about it. For Backlash, there was qualifying matches, right? AJ Styles won uh, a set of matches in order to face Cody Rhodes at Backlash. Uh, Jay Uso won a Fatal 4-Way to face Damian Priest. After that, Damian had Keenan Queen of the Ring off, and he was like, Okay, Drew, um, once you're cleared, you can fight me. And then they fought at Clash at the Castle. Then at Money in the Bank, Seth was like, Hey, I'm back. And Damian was like, You know what? I want to fight you. He chose to fight him. Okay, let's do this. And then SummerSlam, I guess there was a qualifier because, you know, Gunther won Kenny in the ring. But Cody Rhodes, afterwards, Logan Paul was like, hey, I want to try to be double champion. Cody said, yeah, let's do that. And then uh, Solo Sokoa came up and said, hey, you know, I pinned you, so I think I deserve a shot at the title. And Cody's like, you know what? Yeah, that works. And on this one, Cody's like, you know what, Kevin, you've been fine by my side for a long time. Why don't you have a shot at this title? 
And it was very interesting that Kevin said no because, you know, he's the prize fighter. He always wants to fight for a prize. So maybe we'll get a little bit more of a lore with Kevin Owens of, of this prize fighter character because you're going, I don't deserve it. If he doesn't think he deserves the prize, then you know what is there really to fight for? Maybe there's some things we go on there. Maybe Kevin turns heel. Maybe we do a baby phase versus baby phase round one, and then there's a round two later on. Only thing that I know for sure is, is that Randy's not going to like this, even though he does have a match at Bash of the Berlin, which again was another case of, hey, you know, we kind of messed up at King of the Ring. Let's just go, let's just run it back besides Mono and Mono just to see who is truly the better wrestler. I'm going to wait to cash in on it to uh, when you're the champion, and then I'm going to be your first title defense. Again, just I would like a number one contenders match for the main title every once in a while, but it's a nitpick. Anyway, Randy's not going to like that because, you know, he's like, well, Cody, you know, I be one in that belt, and you're just going to give it to Kevin Owens and not me, and then that's going to turn uh, Orton Hill. Again, much more clearer directions moving forward now that we're out of it. Solo Sokoa obviously going to feud with Roman. Do we do this at Bash at the Berlin? Is this is that where round one takes place? If that's the case, what do you put on the card? Because surely Gunther and Orton are main eventing, right? And Kevin and Cody open. Do you place Roman and Solo third? Because you got to assume they're only doing the five matches because this is a B pay-per-view, if you will. So be really interested to see how that is. Uh, I really like the reaction that Roman Reigns received uh, when he came out. I mean... It, it took us 10 years, guys. It took us 10 years for him to finally become the baby face that WWE has always saw in him. And, you, and it only took a matter of him believing in himself to go heel to finally get this back. And I love the OTC chance that was coming through. He absolutely destroyed everyone on the bloodline. I liked how Solo was willing to fight him at first. I also liked the little seed that Tamatanga, when he lifted up the Ulafala, he was like mem mesmerized by it. It's like a crown, if you will. So that was really cool to see. But yeah, back to the women. Look, I don't know if this is just a case of that SmackDown is just two hours and, you know, they can only fit so much, which is why I don't think they should go three. Hell, I don't even think Raw should be three hours, even though Raw has been amazing television lately. I do think both Raw and SmackDown need to be two and a half hours. Two hours and 30 minutes just gives it a little bit more umph. I don't see why you don't have Nia celebrating the week after she won you're gonna have it wait a whole other week it was cool with the whole tiffany stratton thing and you know they're continuing on the feud between her and uh, chelsea green which is real real uh, pr uh high school uh barbie doll type feud you, you know the type of uh prissy girls and uh in high school who would be just like talking behind each other's back and you know, like making these side comments to each other it's gonna be it that I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. But your champion, Naya, should have been present in some way, even if it was a backstage interview or listening to Tiffany talk about all the plans that she has for Celebration Night. be like, I don't really like that. You know, just to, just so that she's on screen. I mean, this is your new women's champion. Again, this just goes back to Liv was at least present on Monday Night Raw. Naya, nowhere to be found. Also, this... Uh, Bianca, Jade, and uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn only went two minutes. It was a squash match. I get it. Jade is going to be going through people. And I think this is also going to help with the storyline between her and Bianca Belair. Because when they do finally lose clean, I think Bianca is going to be the one that takes the pin and Jade will turn heel. I think that is the direction that we go into. Um, and, you know, it's fine. But it is just really watch, rinse, and repeat. Because this is also the same thing that's happening with Sonya's crew that's happening with the damage control. We're going to fight for a few minutes. Someone will win. Maybe they won't. There might be a DQ finish. There'll be a bunch of bodies fighting, and then someone comes in, and I, oh, now the even playing field. So, honestly, out of all WWE programming, it's these feuds with these trios, if you will, that are really, really struggling. And I like how we're giving the women's tag team titles some presence. And I like how, you know, there are actual groups be forming and they all make sense. I just need, you know, a little bit of talking time with it just to give it a little bit more heat. Make it, you know, not just showing that, hey, you know, we would like these titles, but to be like to prove how much the passion is behind the titles and how much they don't like them. And, and uh, how much this person doesn't like this person, this person doesn't like this person. Or hell, just make the tag titles, trios titles that at this point with the women because it always seems to be within groups of three and maybe that is the way it goes uh but yeah I, honestly 
it's the only down point of SmackDown for me. It was the showcase of the women. I think we could have done a little bit more with it. But overall, much, much better show than what it has been. I do, I am looking forward to next week's SmackDown as supposed to past weeks. So I was like, okay, it's Friday. Let's get through this SmackDown and uh, we'll get ready for Raw again. But now I'm looking forward to both shows. Again, they just need to tweak up on the uh, the trios feuds on both Raw and SmackDown. But let me know what y'all thought down in the comments section. Let's have a discussion about it. If you did make it this far in this video, leave a like. I do greatly appreciate it. And again, hit that subscribe button as we do continue on to review Raw, SmackDown, and all the PLEs coming on up. If you like movies, uh, we also got those too. Just did mine for It Ends With Us. I actually really uh, was pleasantly surprised by that. My Borderlands review will be coming up on Sunday. It's an interesting one to talk about, to say the least. But until next time, guys, I'll see you here at Lemon Studios.